Hey students, good morning and happy Monday. Um, keep in mind, um, each week I'll be putting out some video announcements. Um, sometimes I'll be on the camera, sometimes I won't, but it's really just a great way for us to connect. Um, and I kind of review some things from the week before, um, and then I cast vision into what we're going to be doing the following week. So these videos are really for your benefit. Make sure that you're taking the time to watch them. Um, a lot of times questions that many of you are consistently asking, I address on these videos. Um, so just remember, they are pivotal for your success. Um, due dates on your module folder. I want to point this out to you guys. So here is our Blackboard course. I'm going to go under course content to modules. This is where you will find your due date. So if you look um, to module two, which is what we're in now, um, your eulogy handout ed puzzle, that's going to be due on 2-7, the audience discussion board 2-7, your eulogy essay example 2-7. Um, you have a random Friday due date, um, and that's because it's an outline, and I want to get that back to you before next week when we start getting into drafting and your first rough draft. So this is what you'll live and die by for every single week um, and just planning accordingly. Um, and what I try to do is in the modules, I even give you the due dates of things that aren't necessarily um, available to you yet. And what that does is it just enables you to kind of plan out what you're going to have do. So for example, if you know that you have a really busy week um, next week, then you can work on your rough draft early. Um, or if you are trying to figure out, hey, do I have a lot of work due um, the week of the 21st? Well, you can see right there, that's when your final essay is going to be due. So it just gives you a way to really plan things out. Um, but make sure this is what you're going by um, as you plan. So let me go back to that little Word document. So we covered that. Okay, Edpuzzle grading. Um, some of you emailed me this week and you were kind of wigging out like, hey, why do I have a 50 on my Edpuzzle? Keep in mind, Edpuzzle only grades um, the multiple choice that it can grade automatically. I have to go in and manually grade um, your fill in the blank or your short answers. Um, and I do that as soon as the due date passes. So if you look at your grades this morning, you'll see that I already graded all of those. Um, I try to grade on Monday morning so that you always have an update of where you're at in the class as you approach the next week. Um, so don't fret if you see that you have a 25 or a 50 because what that is, is it's just showing you what Edpuzzle could automatically grade. So as we are getting into our very first paper, um, you are getting ready to write your own eulogy. Um, and some of you may be saying, oh my gosh, Mr. Pre, why are we writing a eulogy? Um, I'm going to jump into the eulogy essay module. Um, and I want to talk through this. So Several years ago, um, I used to do all this mode writing, and I would have students write a compare and contrast or an example essay. Um, and to be honest, I never felt like my students were really getting the hang of it. Um, and I, as an instructor, got extremely bored in reading the same types of essays over and over. Um, my brother-in-law and I were sitting at the beach um, several summers ago, and he started talking about this leadership class that he was taking. Um, actually, he was taking it at his local church. Um, and he talked about writing his own eulogy and how empowering it was um, because he had never really thought about what people were going to say about him after he died one day. Um, and I want to clarify something. A eulogy is much different than an obituary. An obituary is something that you read in the newspaper, and it essentially says, um, Logan Dupree died at 87 years old, and these are the people she left behind. That's not what we're doing here. A eulogy is what is read out loud at your funeral. I um, mean, it's typically written by someone who is very, very close to you. Um, the really cool part about this is you are the one getting to write it. 
So I want you to think, um, I tell you to do this as though you were 99 years old. So you're not writing this as though you're passing at 18. I want to make sure you understand that. You are writing this as though you live to 99. Um, and so this is a really empowering experience. You are getting to write your life story um, with your own agency. So I want you to think about who do I want to be? What do I want people to say about me? Um, and that could look different for all of us, right? For some of us, um, our character and who we are as people, um, that has a lot to do with what we want said about us one day. For some of us, it may be what we did with our life. Um, it's really hard for me to separate myself from teaching because that is so much of who I am. So to me, it would be crazy for that to be left out at my funeral one day. Um, being a mom is hard for me to separate from myself. So that would have to be talked about. I want you to really brainstorm and ask yourself what would be said and why. Um, and that can take a long time for you to really process and think through. So take your time brainstorming. We talked about different brainstorming methods. Maybe what you need to do is sit down and just start jotting things down for 10 minutes. Maybe you need to make bullet pointed lists. Maybe you need to draw a picture of what you think your life is going to look like. Um, any of those methods are totally fine. Do what works for you, but really make sure that you're taking the time to brainstorm. Um, what you can see that we're doing this week, we're going to go through the handout together through this Ed puzzle. And the handout, guys, is really minimal. Um, it's really more talking about how many pages does this have to be, um, MLA format, what does that look like, um, some different tools and techniques like that. Um, and then we have this eulogy audience discussion board where we go through some examples of different eulogies and we talk about um, what were the different goals of these and why did certain people talk about certain things? And this kind of helps you think through audience and diction, um, which were two of the concepts that we discussed last week. And then the eulogy essay example, um, Alyssa Kitty was a student of mine who's allowed me to use her eulogy um, through some different semesters. So this just kind of goes over a student who did really well on this and she got an A and what did hers look like? I want to say this out loud, though. This does not mean that this is what I want you to write. Um, I'm showing you an example. Make sure that you're being true to yourself in your own work. Um, be true to what you want said about you one day. And then the most important thing we're doing this week, the outline assignment. Um, I want to point this out to you because a lot of students just kind of do their own crazy thing outlining or they write a whole paper and turn it in. That is not the goal of an outline. Um, I'm going to download this document real quick and kind of walk through this with you. Sorry, my computer's being a little slow this morning. Oh, oh gosh, here we go. Okay, here we go. Okay, so this is the outline for a eulogy. So I want you to use this document to submit your outline. So you should be submitting this with your answers filled in. So here's kind of the introduction, some ideas about what goes in each section. And I give you some organizational ideas to think about. So maybe you're going to organize this um, chronologically and you're going to go through your childhood, your early adult years, your later adult years, your senior years. Or maybe you want to organize this based off of themes, kindness, compassion, hardworking, faithful. Um, again, be true to yourself. Maybe these are not the things you're going to think about. But really, there's two ways to organize this. And it's either chronologically or it's conceptionally through different examples. So I've given you an outline here. Um, this is what I expect. You should give me your hook, okay, your attention getter there at the beginning. Your thesis, which is really going to be the message of your life. If you were to summarize your life in two ideas, what would those ideas be? Um, or not two ideas, two sentences. What would those sentences be? Or one sentence. What would that sentence be? Then your topics 
should again point back to that thesis what three main things or four or five, okay? You're not bound to three paragraphs here. Um, I don't want you to get in this mentality of the perfect five paragraph essay. Step outside of that. This is just to give you an idea. You might turn me in an outline that has topic sentence four, topic sentence five, um, topic sentence six. The main, the main idea I want you to get from these topic sentences are what are your major ideas, your major themes? That's how you should be constructing this essay. And in conclusion, the only thing I want to see here, restate your thesis in different words. That's it. Um, so this is what you will be submitting. So you might only be submitting six sentences to me. For some of you, it might be eight sentences, but it should not be more than that. I don't want to see full paragraphs. I don't want to see a full essay. I want to see a hook a thesis, and your topic sentences. And remember, your topic sentence is the first sentence of a body paragraph. So I should see very different ideas in these topic sentences. Nothing should be repetitive. It shouldn't look too similar to the idea before, and it should only be one sentence. So don't make this too hard, okay? Um, again, this is going to be five to eight sentences that you're turning into me. It gives me an idea to kind of look through your main ideas and most importantly, your thesis. And I can tell you if you're on the right track before you jump into writing a full-blown essay. Um, finally, the last thing that I have to go over today, um, if you want to participate in an honors project for English 111 and be considered an English honors student, please send me an email. Um, this is a, uh, basically a recognition that you can receive at graduation. It can also be an entry into our Gaston College Honors Program. So if that is something you're interested in, I need you to send me an email because you will have a separate project, um, that you'll work on throughout the semester. I will be your mentor in that project. Um, and again, you can receive honors credit at the end of the semester, which will go towards being an honor student and being recognized at graduation. All right. I hope this was helpful. I'm excited to work with you this week. Um, for those of you who received a zero last week, please keep in mind you have until Wednesday to submit your work. This is the one and only time this semester I will be receiving late work. But I know the first week it can be hard to adjust to an online class. So reach out if you have any questions. I'm excited to work with you and let's make it a great week. Have a good day.